So let's take a moment to talk about a case study. In this video, we're going to cover a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Um, I'm going to go through the case study first, then we'll go through how the measurements are made in PicoScope afterwards. So this 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee, the vehicle owner states that the vehicle runs rough, the check engine light is on, and it is flashing. The customer took it to a local parts store. They read the trouble codes and indicated, found a cylinder two misfire, trouble code stored. The customer replaced both spark plugs and the ignition coil for number two cylinder, and the engine still runs poorly. Here's the details of the vehicle. It happens to be a 2011 Grand Cherokee with a 5.7 liter V8. This engine does have the multiple displacement system. The cylinders related to that system are 1, 4, 6, and 7. Uh, we have the firing order of 18436572. And then the cylinder layout, bank one is the odd cylinders on the driver's side of the engine. And bank two, the even cylinders is on the passenger side. So here's a graphic that shows the layout of the cylinders. And in orange, I've highlighted the cylinders that are part of the multiple displacement system. When I got to the vehicle, I scanned it for trouble codes and found only a P0302 uh, misfire detected for cylinder number two. That was the only code that was stored. Um, I started the engine to review a little bit of live data. Um, there was no conclusive data found. The engine did miss immediately and continuously. The fuel trim was reasonable. The temperature sensors read properly. Oxygen sensors were functioning. Um, what the customer did not state was that there was a loud clicking or tapping type noise heard from the front of the engine. Um, it's at this point that I chose to go get out the scope and do a relative compression test. So here in our capture, in, in this trace in our channel A in the blue, we have the amperage that's flowing out of the battery and through the starter motor. And then on channel B, which is in red, we have the ignition coil current for cylinder number one. Now we're not interested in this capture, we're not interested in the shape of the number one ignition coil pattern. We're using it to identify which of the towers in the starter motor pattern is cylinder number one so that we can extrapolate based on the firing order which one is not cylinder number two. Um, and in this image you'll see cylinder number two isn't substantially different than than the cylinder, rest of the cylinders in this engine. Um, it's a little bit lower, but it's not, it's not a substantial difference. So the ignition coil primary current was measured um, compared with other cylinders. There was no difference found. Fuel injector current was measured and compared. Pintle bumps were there. There was no current or no differences found. Um, didn't, didn't, didn't bother saving those captures. It was at this point that I made the decision to go in cylinder for cylinders two and three. Um, three being cylinder number two's companion cylinder. So to determine a companion cylinder, if you take the firing order and you cut it in half and place the second half underneath the first half, you will be you will illustrate your pairs of your cylinders. So in this firing order of one eight four three six five seven two. The companion cylinders are 1 and 6, 8 and 5, 4 and 7, and 3 and 2. And you can see here 1, 8, 4, 3, 6, 5, 7, 2. And if you were to look vertically, each one of those is your companion cylinder. So here we have our first capture. This was made cranking. And cylinder number 2 is in green, channel C on the picoscope. And cylinder number three is in yellow. This is channel D on the picoscope. And by using two pressure transducers at the same time, we're measuring the same cranking, you know, the same engine speed, the same throttle position, the same temperatures. Um, we're, we're, we're compensating for a lot of the th a lot of things that could cause for variation in these two signals. We're compensated for all, most of them because the captures made at the same time. Um, and we can see that definitely in cylinder number two, there's an abnormality that is not present in cylinder number three. 
So this is an excerpt from a capture where there was a snap throttle performed. And again, comparing cylinders two and three, cylinder three being presumed to be good, uh, we had uh, a, a much more normal looking pattern where our trace had compression, expansion, an exhaust plateau, an intake, you know, an intake path, uh, um, stroke, and then coming up on compression. And during that capture, or I should say during this capture, cylinder number two, at this peak here, we had 136 PSI during what should be the exhaust stroke, which is absurd. Um, it is, there's, there's, Definitely a problem within this issue with this when the within the cylinder uh, that's causing this issue. So to confirm that the exhaust cam lobe was worn off of the camshaft, the valve cover was removed, the travel of the rocker arms was observed while rotating the engine by hand. Uh, there's no no video of it, but there it is worth noting the intake rocker traveled approximately a half an inch. Uh, whereas the exhaust rocker moved barely one eighth of an inch. So next we're going to get into how we measured those captures. So for those of you that might not yet be aware, we have a subscription option now. So for those people that already own a PicoScope, they can subscribe. And for a few dollars a month, they can watch all of our training videos um, from our Pico 6 legacy videos. 49, 48 or 49 videos within the Nerd series, and then all of the videos we have made for PicoScope 7. 